Greetings, back again. Today I want to talk about the Noodler's Ink Neponset Fountain Pen and the journey that I have taken with this pen. This pen's been reviewed by plenty of other people before me, but let's just go over it briefly as it is a very classic looking pen. It's uh, the pen that actually brought me back to modern fountain pens. I've been using fountain pens for a long time, but specifically, well, let's talk about the pen here. This pen is made out of ebonite. It has that classic ebonite feel to it, classic ebonite scent. And it is also a very large pen. That was one of the things I liked about it. And it is a very lightweight pen. But I didn't buy it for those properties specifically. The reason why I bought this pen was for its ebonite feed and stainless steel three-tined music nib. The cap has a ring at the base of the cap uh, to protect it from cracking, but uh, it's, a, it's got this big step, which is kind of a drag because it hangs on my cases when I try to put it in, and it beats up the edge of my case because that ring where it's glued on extends below the ebonite and is very sharp. The ring keeps the cap from cracking and does a good job of protecting the threads, but the threads on the barrel are very sharp, too. This pen has an interesting fill system. It's got this breather tube which goes up into the stem of the pen so that when you push, the, when you use up the reservoir and you push the stem in, you've got enough ink to do a little bit more writing. Now this, uh, <laughs> this uh, is all yellowed because, well, my pen is old. Now you can eyedropper this pen, but I don't, I never do that. Uh, story for another time. So when I first got this pen, I uh, cleaned it up, inked it up, and right out of the box, it was a pretty good writer. But uh, unfortunately, I have rather specific needs from, from a tool pen like this and why I bought this pen. You see, my father was a musical arranger. He did a lot of musical writing, and this pen reminds me a lot of a pen that he gave me when I was a young boy to help him out. You see, I used to do layouts for him on score paper, and uh, when I would do those layouts, I would... Uh, well, I would have the score paper, and I would write in the musical instruments, and then the clefs, and then the key signatures, and, and time signature, and then I put lines on it for the bars, and I have to number each measure. And the pens I used, they got pretty beat up from this, so I didn't really want to use my good pens anymore. I wanted this pen because when we would start to write out parts, we used vellum paper, or onion skin, oslet paper. Now the Oslid paper is very aggressive and abrasive, and we had to also use very stable inks like uh, document inks because this machine had to go in and it was going to be exposed to water and ammonia for the Oslid process, so we couldn't have any ink shift when the paper went through. Now this paper you can see is thin on the back side is where the lines are written so that on the front the writing could be nice and smooth. But again, the ink had to be very solid. And those inks were very hard on the pens. They were inks like iron gall inks that were rather corrosive, and document inks which can clog up the feeds and eventually destroy the pen. So uh, sometimes I used to use India ink and uh, use the India ink with a music nib on a dip pen like this because you don't put India ink in a fountain pen. And uh, then I had a flex pen that I would use, too. I actually prefer the flex, but I couldn't get those flex in a classic fountain pen. I had to use a stub nib. And that's the reason why I liked this pen, because it had a music nib inside of it that was stainless steel. And even though I'm not really writing music professionally, I still wanted to have those properties and still expect to have these properties in a pen that I own. And unfortunately, this pen was coming up short on those things. And even though I did like the pen, it, it just, well, you know, it, it, when I would write with it, I had to have it at specific angles. And the nib had a, one time is too short, so when I would write at certain angles, or it, it would spit the ink out and make feathering all over. And then the uh, feed would ball up and huge blobs of ink would just roll out onto the page and ruin what I was writing. So this pen was not working out for me. And, uh, well, it uh, is a classic looking pen and I liked the feel of it and the look of it, so I set it aside. It really did remind me of a lot of that pen that my father gave me all those years ago. 
And uh, as I had this pen laying there for a couple of years, I figured the best way to solve this problem was to get another pen that I don't like. This one. This is a newer model of this same pen. It has some differences in materials, but it really is pretty much the same. Like with this pen, when you look at the feed, you can see that this, uh, not the feed, but the, the reservoir, you can see it's all yellowed, and, and it's because I've had this pen for a number of years, where this pen is, uh, this other pen is fairly new. I got this from a guy. He didn't like this pen because he had, uh, had a, it was, he was having similar problems. It was inking all over and he was having trouble with the pen. He said the, the, uh, feed actually fell out of the pen when he was trying to blot it. And, uh, he, when he took it apart, he found out that the feed in his pen was too small. Now, this is a good thing for me because I had an issue where I was trying to fix my pen by buying this. This is a Fountain Pen Revolution Ultra Flex Stainless Steel Nib. And I bought this nib, and it came with this feed, which is too short to fit properly into the section, or the grip section, of this pen. Here, let me show you. This uh, is too short. And let me take this pen apart, and you can see it's got this vent tube, which is specific to this pen for the fill system as well but you can see that this one is is definitely shorter than the other one you can see a little vent tube sticking out and you can see how this one is a little shorter but these these are like they could have come from the exact same blank and when i lay them over you can really see they have the same contour along the edge and they're the exact same length so uh, this seemed like a great opportunity for me to be able to figure out how I could replace that and just wipe this away and uh, get a feed that was more the proper length with the vent tube on it. And the fellow that I would talk to with that pen, he wanted to get rid of it and he didn't want it at all. So I basically just had to pay him for the shipping. And uh, I was able to get this nice black ebonite Naponset pen. And I put an FPR, Fountain Pen Revolution, nib on this and with the original feed this feed is still a little short and you can see it meets at the shoulder but it seems to work just fine and these go to a different pen so i'm just gonna put those aside but the pen works fine and so uh these threads are a little wonky on this one too and you can see that this pen needs to be inked but i'll push in the plunger which has ink in it and we'll just see how far we can get with that little extra pen uh, ink in the reservoir from the stem so you can see the shoulders are still a little short but the uh, pen works pretty well so let's give it a try i'm going to speed this up so we don't have to labor through my writing and this again is the neponson with the fountain pen revolution ultra flex and you can see i get some good line variation when i'm drawing my g clef here the pen of course is running dry because it's out of ink but when I draw a treble clef or a bass clef, and then I can draw the alto clef, and uh, I get good line variation. And I always liked using flex pens, but when I was writing back in the uh, 80s and 90s, the only people who made flex nibs for fountain pens, they were either very expensive or they were very old. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a tool pen, and I didn't want to destroy a classic antique pen. So this is uh, a great, a great alternative. And you can see the pen is pretty much out of ink now. But uh, by doing this, I took two pens and uh, actually ended up with a good pen. I took the nib that I got from the short feed pen, I put it into this other pen, and now this nib writes much better. So I ended up with two good pens for the uh, trouble of uh, waiting a couple of years. Now, would I recommend these pens to anybody? I don't think I would. And the reason why is because I have two pens and some iffy quality control, which led me to not have a good pen until I had one and a half pens and I added this uh, other nib. And so, uh, you know, again, I have very specific reasons why I want these pens because out of the box again if you're just doing writing they write fine but I have specific needs that I want to be able to do with my pens and so these are tool pens for me and uh, you know this is my Jin Hao you can just see the size comparison I bought these two pens at about the same time this pen has subsisted on a on a diet of 
platinum carbon ink and has never given me any trouble. And now that I've got these two pens working, I'm pretty happy. So that's it.